Hello, welcome back. My name is Giovanni Rodriguez, and today we are going to learn how to do a dodgeball game using Wick Editor. On the description below, you will find the Wick file um, downloaded, and then click Open within the editor and open the dodgedemo.wick file. Do double click, and it will be open on the editor. Then you will notice that you have two PNGs, one for the our main character, Flashy, and the other for our projectiles. So let's add to canvas the main character, and then let's resize it a little bit. Let's do like um, 0.3 here, and 0.3 in here. That should be good and then let's convert it into a clip and let's call it flashing okay so now let's start programming flashy in order to do that we will need a update script so let's get rid of the default one delete and then add script let's go to timeline and then click on update so after you have your update script, the first thing that we want to to do is um, to program the the movements. So, all right. So then we have if is key down um, left button. We will be defining that button later. If that happened, let's just move Flashy to the left. This dot x minus equal. Um, let's define a Flashy speed, like a Flashy speed, and then else if same thing. Let me copy this line here. Copy and paste. Same thing with the right button. The user press right, then instead of moving flashy to the left, let's move flashy to the right. Uh, we will be doing that by putting plus equals instead of minus equal. Then speed, and that should be a magic. Now we have to define these three variables somewhere. So for that, let's let's do it in the in the default script of the first first frame so let's click default and then let's click flashy speed equal to five um maybe left button equal to left which is the left key in the keyboard and then right button equals to right then let's define other variables needed for this game uh, for every game I define a boolean variable called game over um, since I'm defining this in here they will be um, globals so game over is it will start in false state because we will be playing until we are dead, which is game over, game over equals, equals to, to true. Then a timer. Um, this is for the projectiles to start uh, cloning. Max time. This will be uh, also used for the, for the projectiles. Since we are running this um, application in six frames per second, we will start in, uh, throwing projectiles in, in, you know, within a second. So then uh, we have the flashy speed. Let's define a flashy angle just for the movement to see some kind of um, static animation going on when we move left or right. Let's, let's change its angle whenever it moves to, to six. 6 degree okay then let's define a 
well for now we can test this maybe if we could play we can oh something something is really bad let me think let me see the script again in flashy oh this is the problem so in here i'm sorry it should be x as well so let's do that now um okay oops so we have to program also a, a left limit or corner and also a right limit so the player um, can escape from the scene so let's do that now let's define that in the in the main you know in the default script of the of, of our frame so let's do like um, left corner so the left corner should be uh, this corner here zero but we will be zooming the half of the flashy so it will be like um, zero plus flashy dot width divided by two and then the right corner will be project dot width minus uh, flashy dot width divided by two so then we will use these two variables left corner and right corner at the flashy script let's click there and then we will say if this dot x is less than the um, la, um, than left corner then let's put flashy x coordinate equal to left corner and we will do the same thing else if this uh, flashy dot x greater than right corner then let's put the x coordinate equal to the right corner in this way we are limiting flashy to be always on the stage let's, let's test this out okay this is working just fine let's apply now rotation whenever flashy moves so we can see some kind of static animation so whenever it's um, moving to the left let's change its rotation um, to the to the flashy angle that we defined um, the same thing with when we move to the right we want the same thing but in this this time around to positive flashy angle let's see Oop. so whenever we are you know move backwards it will rotate and forward it will rotate as well this is like a good um effects for for the for the walk animation without animating anything so that's good oops but whenever we are idle it it will be on the last angle that we assign we have to reset that to zero whenever we don't press either right or left keys let's do that so let's go to the flashy code and in here we can add an else which is where we are not um not in here in here else this is when we are not neither you know uh, pressing left or right so then this is the idle so we are we don't have to add anything to the x coordinate but we have to reset the rotation to zero let's do that paste zero let's test this out and this is behaving fine all right what else um so since we defined a game over let's also allowing the 
player to move flashy when we are playing and not during game over. In order to do that, this whole code should be inside of an if statement, and that if statement should be if game over is false, that means that we are playing, then we just do a cut and paste. And I want to indent everything so we can have a better readable code. And whenever game over or e game over e falls, we can use also triple uh, equal sign. And let's do it. Since game over is false, everything is working fine. Now um, let's add the. Um, the projectiles so add to canvas and then maybe let's reduce it um, 50 percent of its size let's go to scale y and put 0.5 and then same with the height 0.5 and we have this projectile going on so let's name it ball for now um, let's do a make clip button and now it's a clip, so let's name it ball, and that will be it. Okay. Um, so let's, since this projectile will be cloned several times during the game, let's put it in here, and then let's program some things. Um, so first. Um, let's do something under the default state. If this is a clone, we have to identify it, and then if not, we have this session in here. So you will have two scenarios. The first one is when this ball is a clone. And the second one is when it's the original. So in here for the clone uh, ball um, projectile code and here for the original projectile code. For the original, I want to disappear the original. So I will do a this dot opacity equals to zero. And then for the other, I want this dot opacity equals to one. So right now, if I press play, this projectile should disappear. And that it, it disappeared. And then when I hit pause again, it will appear. Okay, so we have that done. And then I will also uh, define a variable for when it's a clone, which is the speed of the ball, of the projectile, ball speed. Um, it will start at zero, like if we are just um, releasing the ball from the ceiling, and then it will start accelerating. So now let's add like um, an update script so the projectile can fall. Um, let's click at uh, timeline and then update. Okay, so within the update, we want these projectiles to be moved only when we are not in game over. So when we are playing, so we need like um, if game over is false, um, we can do this. Also another met method is since this is a boolean variable, we can just delete this and then it will return true or false and we can set like a not in here and this will read like a if we are not in game over, then we will be doing this, okay? All right. And then since I don't want the original to be moved, I need to, to differentiate between if this is a clone or not. So only the clones will be moving. So if this is a clone, um, then this code will apply. So we have we had already in the default a variable called ball speed 
first we need to uh, make sure that that's not zero anymore so we will be like uh, increasing that a little bit let's do like a 0 0.3 every single frame it will accelerate at that frame at that rate and then we will be assigning that into the into the y coordinate so since um, in graphics uh, positive it's like from top to bottom so we will need to assign y you know in a positive way in here and then we will do like a this uh, dot ball speed and then we will uh, every single projectile that is cloned will be check if it's hitting flashy so we can have a game over okay so we need to program that and there is a built-in function called hits so if this which is the projectile hits and then who it would be flashy flashy if that happens then we want game over to be true so that's that will do the trick so if any of the clones hits flashy then the game over will will be true and then this um, if statement here will not occur anymore okay and also I need code for whenever um, the the projectile is not anymore within the stage so it misses hitting flashy and it will out of the stage we need to remove them so in order to do that let's compare its y coordinate to maybe we, we should define a variable for the bottom corner then um, we will remove the clone and then bottom bottom corner um, could be whatever but let's go to the frame code and then let's let's add in here bottom corner equals to um, it could be like a project dot height plus um, bo um, ball dot height divided by two so that should be our bottom corner and then let's return to the ball code and hit the update tab and then we have bottom corner defined if y is greater than or equal that that value then we will be removing the projectile and then also we will want some kind of animation when flashy dies so let's rotate flashy like if he is laid out like um, 90, 90 degrees so flashy dot uh, rotation equals to 90 and what else we can do I think that that should be it for this and then we have to put some code so we can clone this um, boss here so let's add this at the mainframe in the update tab we don't have any update tab for now um, so we can do that let's just click in here um, and then timeline and then update so let's let's during our gameplay let's clone these projectiles so we we need to do it if game over is equal to false so we are playing we're still playing so let's do if um, not game over sorry game over then um, let's we define a timer variable and max time um, so let's let's increase that timer by one and then if timer is greater or equals or 
greater than max time which max time starts in 60 um, let's if that happens first let's reset the timer to zero and then let's subtract one for the max time so every single time um, that we clone a projectile the next time we'll do it faster and faster until the game is very hard to play so this is a good way to increase the difficulty of the game so let's do that uh, minus equal one um, so then if um, if 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 we are about to clone let, let's do the clone now so let uh, define a variable called ball clone equals to ball dot clone and then let's um, so let's assign a random coordinate for for where the ball will be cloned and for that point it will start falling we want at some point from this corner to this corner so we can do like um random dot integer from maybe left corner to right corner which are these two variables that we have defined already for flashy left corner right corner we can use the same two for our our projectiles clones and that will will do the, the trick all right so let's try this now let's do it. Oop, it seems that it's working and let's try to hit in purpose a projectile for flashing and the game over transition from false to true and flashy rotates to 90 degrees and everything stopped because we put everything uh, guard by a game over variable so this is working just as expected um, so now let's continue playing to see what's going on so it's supposed to be harder and harder because we are um, putting our timer max time um, decreasing its value every single time so it will start be like cloning projectiles as crazy so now it's starting to do that it will be like um, impossible at some point so uh, at this point the game it's become unplayable right this is the difficulty that we don't want in our game because then um, this will be the maximum amount of of time that a player can can play our our game so we need to do something about it so let's go revisit that um, timer logic it's under the frame logic in the update so in here we are saying you know um, every, every single time that the timer is equal to the max time we are um, decreasing this max time so we have to put a limit this cannot be you know zero because it will be impossible let's try um, maybe 10 so if max time it's less than 10 let's set max time to 10 so in this way this will be the limit and maybe we could do like a nine just in case let's try that now all right you see it seems to be working fine So it starts to, to getting hard and hard 
but if you notice, we don't have now all those projectiles at the same time. We, I think that we already reached that limit where the max time is equal to 9, and it's already be 9. And this difficulty is already hard, but it's not something that we cannot avoid. So this is perfect for our game. So now, what is missing in order to, to this to be like a full game is some kind of measure, like um, how how to make the player knows if it's you know playing better than before or it's still um, playing the game um, you know with the same amount of time or not. So we have to do some kind of a score going on. So in order to do that, maybe whenever a projectile um, disappears, we can increase our score. Let's define a score now. So let's go to the text and put in here score. Uh, score. And then, actually I select a different, like, um, let's see. I really like to use some old school uh, graduate is the one. This is like a very squared uh, font, which is very old school. I really like this one. And then we can do a copy and paste to select the same font. And then um, edit the, the value to zero. And then let's just put some space in here. I think that this is just fine. I really like to name all my objects. So this one, um, this one will be like the label. So let's put like a um, score label. And then for the other should be the score value. And the score value will be the one that will be changing um, from time to time. So first thing that we want to do is always to start the score in zero. In order to do that, let's go to the mainframe code and let's define a um, variable for the score. Score equals zero. And then in order to assign that to our uh, text field, let's do like um, the name of the text field, which is score value. Dot set text and then you put score which is zero at this point so we can test that by changing this to maybe 100 or 1000 and then when we click play we have it reset it to zero so that's working already so the next thing that I want to do is to increase the score so let's go to the ball code and then let's go to the update and whenever we remove this let's increase that score to one so in order to do that let's do like um score value which is the text field then set text which is the function to change the text value and then let's increase the score plus equal to one and then let's test this it seems that it's working just fine so this is getting good and now let's change this to be like um, a very weak editor um, brand color let's try to mimic this green in here um, for this stage in order to do that let's go to the editor settings and then in the background color let's hit let's uh, select something like um, this could work yep and then let's do the same thing let's put these um, letters in white and, and that So I guess this is 
this is everything for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you could learn something and maybe you can implement this with more details and more effects and you know with a better gameplay. Maybe you could implement like a power up so you can be invisible for a period of time. Everything is, is possible, just you know use your imagination and increase this this demo. This is already good. Um, it's playable and it's working just fine. Thank you for watching this tutorial and see you next time. Bye.